Hello, madam. Hi, how are you? Your father is a great man. Thank you. My uh, only recollection of him was in 2001, uh, 2002, I believe. And I saw him in President Kufour's house in Accra. And uh, I'm hearing that at the time I saw him, he must have been 96. Oh, uh, yeah, um, 2002. In two years. He was 98. He was 98 mm -hmm. in 2002. Because it was that year he died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I saw him uh, and he looked like 50. He was walking. Mm -hmm. yes, wow. Yes, yes. What, what do we have to learn about Ochami? Well, as a man, he was bold and courageous. And actually, you see, because he felt that bearing grudges is not something that one should do because it will shorten your life because of his experiences when he was detained and all that. So he was a man who forgave easily. He was a man who could say whatever he felt was wrong regardless of whoever it was to, you know. No matter what, we always say that love him or hate him, you could not ignore him. Because whatever he said was the truth as he saw it. And he was actually, he had a vision of the, for the next generation, not just for himself. He did never sought a political uh, what do you call it? He didn't want to be a president or an MP or anything. He never sought an office. So you see, I would never, and some of my siblings also believe it, that he was not actually a politician. No, but he was. No, that's what, yeah, but you see, I mean, what's the meaning, what's the definition of politician? Well, of if you look at the 1955 by-election mm -hmm. in Wabeja, mm -hmm. we brought him to the political limelight. He single-handedly wrote a campaign against the CPP mm -hmm. for BF Kusi to win the by-election mm -hmm. for the NLM. Okay. So he was so a politician. He supported others, but mm -hmm. he never sought a post. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to say. Because as far as I'm concerned, the difference between a politician and a leader is that a politician seeks a post. Their vision is to win an election mm -hmm. and be in a post. A leader actually help others to get there. And so I believe that my father was an advocate because politicians also don't speak the truth. Let mm. me say it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, because you see, people say they, you know, they show, uh, they give a lot of promises and they don't follow up with it. And also they always have to uh, think about their opponents. They have to think about their voters and what they are going to say and all that. But he never, you know, actually, you know, thought about that. All he wanted was to ensure that the next generation will live in a better world. So he was that sort of a man. He was a very emotional man. Mm -hmm. Very emotional. I mean, especially, you know, to us, his children. How many children did the Ochami have? It was, we were 36. 36? 36. 36. From and how many now, women? How many women? Yes. We had more men than women. No, I mean, how many wives or how many? That one, I can't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> I always tell people I don't know because you know there, are there are a lot of, yeah, we are 36. How there many are a lot of them who are one, one, one. Well, actually, I would say he married about five. Yes. Yeah, he married about five, and all the five had more than one children. Mm -hmm. But most of them are one, 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 because he was just giving them. I mean, he, they were giving to him. They were you know, giving to him. Yeah, because you see, as a like chief. Total. Yeah, as, he, as a chief, he inherited some wives. Okay. And he had children with the wives he inherited? Not all of them, because he selected his own. Did you he know? like women? Huh? Did he like women? Well, women liked him because okay. he was a very handsome man. Yes, he was my first love, you know, very handsome. And he was rich. It, well, yes, otherwise he would not have been able to put all his resources for the NLM. He made a lot of sacrifices. I would say to the detriment of us when he was incarcerated. Yes. You go know what I'm saying? Because you see, it's like, it's when you are in trouble that you see those who love you. But when the trouble came, you know, people neglected him. And I can say boldly that even Asantehine 
you know, distilled him. Yeah, that's a story. Because like that. of the pressure, yeah. From, from the Nkoma. Nkoma. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you see, there are two things. Asante Hine then Premper the second? Premper the second, whom I'm named after anyway. I see. Yes. You know, uh, there are two things that actually broke my father's heart whilst he was in prison. One, when my brother died, and two, when uh, Premper distilled him. But you see, he was somebody who always looked for the positive side out of things. He knew that he would come out. My mother used to visit him, and he always said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. You know, and he, he loved his children. So he came out of prison alive? Yes. He, in fact, actually, his hair was totally white. And you see, I've, I've, I've chronicled it in my second book. You know, I'm an author of five books. Mm -hmm. The second one, Boarding Time, which was published by Graphic uh, Corporation. Right now, it has been republished in the United States by another uh, publishing house. You know, where I chronicled, you see, when he came out, he was actually sick. Mm -hmm. Because he had not been, you know, eating well. I mean, if he tells you what they were eating and all that, you would just marvel. But he said he always looked forward to Sundays because he was a staunch Catholic. They will not allow though because my father was on death row. What death did he do? Road. He was what responsible he for do? the Kulungugu bombing? No. Nkrumah believed so. That, I, of course. Nkrumah believed so and all the propaganda that came out. Even, you see, when my father went to detention, I was only about six or seven. Mm -hmm. And I remember every time I went to school, you know, the children would be telling me stories about my father. You know, and it really hurts me because I know children can be very visual. You lived in Kumasi? You live in Kumasi, yeah. Were you living in Kumasi at the time? Yes, I was. And I remember we suffered, you know, like people throwing stones and bottles and things like that. They are coming, we will run, hide under the, you know, under the chairs and everything. You see, it was self-defense, I would say. Because, I mean, you can't sit there when somebody is coming at you with a knife or with some, you won't sit there and die. You will defend yourself. And that's what happened. Because, you see, the battle was taken to their ground, not the other way around. Okay? The CPP took the battle to Ashanti. Yes, they took the and battle And they decided there. that they have to get uh, Ochami out of the, of the they race. They had to get rid of him. You know, because, you see, uh, people are talking about the fact that he was a separatist, he was tribalistic, mm -hmm. this and that and that. But, you see, if you read history, even the books that even the foreigners wrote, and even in his own biography, you know, there were a lot of other groups, Northern People Congress, they unload this and that, the Ghana, Northern People's blah, Party, blah, blah, yeah, the Gamma yeah. yeah. So many of party, them. Yeah. But yes. that's why Nkrumah passed the Avoidance of Discrimination Act. That is it. That's why they came together, led by my father to establish UP, United Party, because my father realized that Nkrumah just wanted to destroy the opposition totally. And he said, let's come together, because in unity, we will be strong. And so that's how the UP party was formed, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, he so was... your father was a founding member, or, or maybe the main founder of the UP party? Yes. Together with BF Kusi and others. Your father yeah. was also responsible for bringing over to the UP, Victor Usu and... Uh, yes. And yes. Aram Ar 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 Ponsan. Aram Ar uh, Ponsan and all and the others. Because, you see, they Joe are... Apia. Mm -hmm, Joe Apia. You know, they all came because they saw that what my father was saying was the truth. And you normally say, even I saw it on your this thing, that when you speak the truth, people hate you. Yeah. You see, and my father will speak the truth regardless. You know, and you see, that's for but me. But in defending himself, could he have participated in the Kolungugu bombing? No. Could he have participated in the shooting of uh, Osajefo? No. In the famous because, you uh, see, Salifu Dagati case? He was not that sort of a person, like I said. Even when he came out of prison. He was always telling us that, you see, what Nkrumah does, if he does something good, you have to praise him. But the politics of the day was very violent. We, we have a video where mm -hmm. uh, one of the NLM operators is saying that when Bafo was killed in Kumasi, mm -hmm. they decided that they should also get out and kill. Well, you know, you see, how do Bafo I... Bafo was it? the organizer for the NLM. He was killed by the CPP. Yes. So the, the okay. politics of the day was very violent. It was very violent. Especially in Ashanti, too. It was very violent. That's, like I said, the battle was taken to Ashanti. Mm -hmm. But you see, I have done this research about the Mau Maus of Kenya mm -hmm. and Che Guevara of, you know, that place and all. You see, you see that it all starts with a group from a specific tribe or from a specific community. And you see, they, when they come out to want to 
you know, against injustice and inequality, they are always attacked by the status quo. And so, you see, that's what happened, you know, with uh, NLM and all that. My father believed that Nkrumah's steps, you know, was going to head for dictatorship. Because, you know, all that they discussed before, because they brought him in, you know, they brought him Krumah in UGCC, you know, they brought him in and everything. And, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. If he wanted independence now, they also wanted independence, but on a different, you know, level and everything. You make an agreement, okay, we will decide that when you come, you will do this and you do that, just like normal politicians. But when they get there, it's differently. And my father said, no, that's not, and he would not allow Nkrumah to forget the promises that he made. And you see, that was what Nkrumah had against him. He could not shut him up. The only way to shut my father up was to get, him, get rid of him, take him out of Ashanti. And even, I don't know if you know, the night before he was arrested, the police superintendent, who was a white man, went to warn him that they are going to pick you up. And my father said he was not going to flee. Because there's a, a, a proverb in Ashanti. So, Ohini Ankwa Akwejani, that he was not going to flee. He has not done anything wrong. That what he was saying was the truth. And you see, I like what he said. You know, it, 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 it means that even when Buzia came, he was the first to establish that passion for local government. You know, meaning that, you see, when you are local, you'll be able to actually enjoy more of the resources, rather than just put a, a blanket on everything, you know. So, so he, was, he, was a, he was a motivator of the Buzia's was, yeah. rural development agenda? Of course, Buzia came out of that. Mm -hmm. Buzia and even Dankwa, all of them, you know, because you see, he had a special, uh, how do I put it, stand that he was also a traditionalist, okay? He was the linguist. He had been so a linguist. So he fought libation? Yeah, well, libation is just part of this for prayer. It's part of that. So he worshipped idols? No, he didn't. He was a staunch Catholic. But Ochami, Santihini is Ochami. Is a that is the traditional custom. Mm. It's different from going to church. Okay. okay? All right. So uh, what I would say is that, you see, he was highly misunderstood. And he knew what he was saying was the truth. You know? Very well said. So tomorrow, what are we doing? That's a book in front of you? Yeah, that's the book. Okay, it's a, it's a biography? Yeah, it's really a collection of, you know, when this re Akuto and seven others were established. Royal Patriots, the making of Ghana. Yeah, mm -hmm. by the law school. Mm -hmm. You see all these uh, luminaries and all these dignitaries who gave speech to support the program has been compiled into this book and also a picture, a portrait of I him. have a personal attachment to this because... Uh, I was the first, uh, the MC for the maiden edition mm -hmm. of the Ria Kutu Lectures at oh, Law School. Oh, okay. You Peter were? Ajete, yeah, Peter Ajete at that time was the... You mean the very leader. first one? Very, very first yeah, one. Yeah, in fact... Recently, somebody sent me the photograph. I'll show it on TV. Oh, I was okay. the MC for it. Oh, you the, were? The very first one, And yes. at that time, I didn't even lectures. see you. Because yeah. I know I was there with my brother, the minister. The conference center. And my mother. Like yeah. And we were, we were Ajete there. was chairing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, I remember and, the very first and one. And Ajete gave an excellent speech in which he connected the work of Bafour. Ochami, to all the major constitutional cases yes. that had been held in Ghana. Mm. And he found a way to connect Balfour's philosophy to all the rulings of the Supreme Court yeah. subsequent after him. Yeah. It, was, it was very, very endearing. And yeah. uh, but you see, that's what people didn't see. That was you know, because of the propaganda. No, because of the propaganda to discredit him. You know, so you see, when somebody is discrediting somebody, regardless of whatever the person says, so... The person is like this, so they won't take it seriously. But Ochami lived for so long. He died in 2002. Yeah. Why couldn't he turn the story? Turn the story? Yes. What he he was there for do? that long. Yeah, because he had done what he thought he could. One, he sacrificed a lot, his family. You see, it's the proverbial uh, Bible quotation that strikes the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. My siblings and I, we suffered a lot. It's like, you know, we had to be given to different family members to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. It was really a terrible time for us, you know. Why could he have lived with all 39 of you? But you see, he had ways. He would build a house for this family, mm -hmm. like that, like that, like that. So he was visiting? Yes, he was visiting. Now, in his latter days, you know, we lived at Asukwa, you know, with my mom and all that, and, you know, we used to 
talk, we used to, he used to crack jokes, you know, we'd be laughing and everything. And people would be wondering, are you sure your father laughs? I say, yeah, he laughs. Mm -hmm. You know, but you see, he had an, a facade for the outside because of, uh, I, mean, I don't, yeah, the, the role that he used to play. I mean, I've watched him several, I watched him several times at, you know, when uh, Prevent II was alive. When, you know, every time I had to go because I was named after him and things like that, my father in action. And many times I would just watch him. This is at a court? At a I, I just had him fear men Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. also first court. Yeah. Where he would be presiding as a chairman. Yes. Mm. I mean, you see, it's like a different person altogether. And many times I found myself looking at him from the outside, not as my father. Because you are talking with him. The next sentence will be, he will drop a nugget of wisdom. And then you go, huh? What did you say? And he will repeat it. You see, it, it came to him naturally to say things as they are, you know. And I mean, and he had this vision that in future we are going to suffer because of we are always, everybody wants to build their own house, nobody visits anybody, and things like that. And he always used Muya Mimobo Se. He kept on saying Muya Mimobo Se. And one time I asked him, I said, How come you say you don't bear grudges? He said, if you bear grudges, you kill yourself. Mm. And another thing he said is that even if you know that somebody hates you and wants to kill you, if that person does something good, acknowledge it. If you don't, you are deceiving yourself. You see, he was that sort of a person. He will move on from grudges, from pain, because he suffered so much, sacrificing a lot, you know, if not for anything at all. As his children, we know what we went through. Now, somebody like my brother, Honorable will say a free year like this, you know, it's like he's the one who really is a, 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 the embodiment of what my father wanted, you know, to make sure. Because my father had cocoa farms and all that. So, he, you know, so I have two brothers in the ministry. Of a Greek? Yeah. I see. Who are One is a experts. director. Yeah, one is a director. And he was there before even my brother became a minister or oh, something like that. Oh, I see. Like That's that. interesting. Yeah. And he's also a Chiriakuto, you know. He has masters in agri as well. But my brother has doctorate and all that in agri Because they saw my father's you know, farms and everything that if you farm, it's a business on its own mm -hmm. that you could you know, help a lot of people. I suppose that's how he was able to feed us you know, when we were growing up. But you see, one thing is that because my father was the sort of person that he was so warm and so kind to us and all that, I remember when he was in detention, President Tito came. That was 1961. Mm -hmm. In my school, I was selected to go and give uh, flowers to President Tito and President Nkrumah. And so you see, you can imagine, those times, Kwame Nkrumah, you know, young pioneers and everything, I always shied away from that. But I was selected out of the whole school to go and do that. So I was scared. But you see, it gave me a person to pay, like you saw my father once, like you said, mm -hmm. I saw in Chroma and he, I greeted him and he asked me, young lady, how are you? Did he know who you were? No. Did and he I ask what just, your name is? No. Were and you, I was just were you looking, petrified that he may ask that? What's your name? Somehow, I, I was just looking at him and in my mind, he said, this is the man who put my father behind bars. You know, the thought, you know, was going through my mind. And President Tito was really nice and laughing and everything, but... You see, I was, I don't, I don't, I can't even explain my feeling. All I knew was that this man has put my father behind bars and we are suffering. But after, you know, delivering the flowers and everything, you know, doing everything, I just left. But I, I never forgot my encounter with Nkrumah. The people in the school who selected you for this, mm -hmm. did, were they aware of your, your father's relationship? You see, with... I have no idea. But you see that, you see, in those days, I was in the Roman Catholic school at Ashtown. In those days, you know, they say, teacher's pet, teacher's pet, you know, because they say I was diligent and all that. And you know, normally when they are pushing duties, they will pick somebody they could trust. So I don't know what their purpose was. All I knew was that it was like, she being led to the slaughter. You know, I, just, I was just there. But it was a great experience that I've never... Did you ever visit him in prison? Hmm? He didn't visit the no, they prison. never allowed any of his children to. Only my mother was the only one who could go. And so my mother compiled a picture book for, of all of us, you know, to him. And uh, my father said, you know, during uh, prison, what actually also helped him that 
on Sundays, the condemned cells, you know, he was in a condemned cells. He could, they, he would not, they would not allow him to go to church. But he will always hear the song, especially the song, Lead Kindly Light. The Kindly Criminal. Yeah, the kind of mist encircling gloom. Lead down me on. The night is dark and I am far away from home. In fact, every time he spoke to us about that song, he became emotional. That indeed he was far away from us when he felt he did nothing wrong. And you see, when people say that you were asking about the Kolengugu bomb and all that and everything, look, Henry VIII, me, I'm a historian. Mm -hmm. Henry VIII, when Thomas Abeket was, you know, was doing something, he said, oh, who helped me with this Thomas Abeket? Somebody went and killed him. Mm -hmm. And then he can say, did I ask you to kill him? But he, then the person said, but you said. You get what I'm saying? So you see, things like that can happen. Not directly from somebody who's giving the command, go and do this, go and do that. That's why politicians, so-called, have to be very careful about their statements. Mm -hmm. Because whatever you say, it can become a bullet or a seed. See, it can become a bullet or a seed. But you see, my father loved us so much. And um, every time we gathered, which was an annual uh, gathering, first of every year, you know, if you come and see us, you marvel. So many of us, we came from around the world. First you January? Mm -hmm. In his last days? No, no. From Since the he beginning? Yeah, in fact, from the time he started celebrating his 70th birthday, we were always celebrating. In fact, we were jeering up for, the, for his 100th birthday mm -hmm. because he was so strong. Like he saw I him, saw him that same he year. So strong. That, was, that same year was the year September that he died. Mm. He was strong. So we were jeering up for the 100th day celebration. But you see, my father, who has been misunderstood, and you know, I mean, all sorts of things have been said about him and everything. You see, I am believing that, you see, when people read the historic book, history books, they will see that what he wanted was not something, he didn't want a political post. He wanted something for the next generation. Mm. Not to, you know, live under dictatorship. And you know that as soon as my father and the rest were arrested, the PDA Act came into being. So we were one of those, the final question, one of those who were excited when the coup occurred in 1966. He was what? You were one of those excited when the coup occurred in 1966. Me? Yes. Of course. I mean, that's natural. Because let me tell you, I, uh, my father was released in 65. Mm -hmm. But Nkrumah banned him from Ashanti. So you lived in Accra? No. Bolga. Bolgatanga. Bolgatanga North. That's where Nkrumah sent him to? Yes. But Nkrumah said Nkrumah he was releasing him on condition that he doesn't step in Ashanti. I mean, think about it. Oh. Think about it. So my father... But which house did he have in Bogatanga at that time? Bogatanga, luckily for him, he had a nephew that he had trained who was mm -hmm. a lawyer. He mm -hmm. was a judge then. Mm -hmm. You know, so he went and stayed there. So he stayed with, I think, was it Tamale or Was it he who chose two? Boga or maybe Kuma must have said, don't go to Ashanti. No, no, no. And no, then no. he decided he'd go to Boga. He could have been in Accra. He could have been. He could have stayed with Dankwa. He wanted to stay in Ashanti. Dankwa died. Dankwa had died in 64. Yes. yes. Correct, correct. And in fact, that day, you know, my father talks about how sad they were, they were all in prison. Went. Because Dankwa just defended him. Yes, and yes, the he others, did. Yeah. You know. So my father was banned from Ashanti region. And I remember after the coup, when he was coming down, I was attending St. Monica's boarding school. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the whole school just came out. You know, I didn't even know what was going on. To meet what you Yes. I didn't know what was going on. I had been punished because I was so naughty. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was kneeling beside my bed. When all I heard was that, So I just, that was my father. I just jumped. And he showed up? Yes, he showed up. In your dormitory? To visit me in my dormitory. Oh, I see. He was and you didn't know he was coming? I didn't know. He was coming from, from the north after the coup. Okay. And you see, that's how my father was. For us, his daughters, when you are pregnant, please don't tell him. Why? He will call you. How is the baby doing? Have you eaten? Hey, is your husband treating you? He was that sort of a person. You know, always wanted to be involved with us. So you can imagine somebody like that being far away from his children. You know, it was something that, he, that really broke his heart. But I thank God that it, um, it strengthened him. It made him more determined to speak what the truth is. And you see, me, per se, I don't like politics. Mm -hmm. So my passion for social justice, 
I channeled it through NGO. I worked for Action Aid. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked for Action Aid and, and then other NGO, Osfam, United Nations, and all that. And in fact, domestic violence, you know, I was also on the streets with uh, Dr. Dramana and then he, 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 Sheila Minka Primo, even Osala Ousu, who is now the same. We were all on the streets against domestic violence. And thank God the day it was passed, we were all in the parliament. Mm. We had red cloth, white cloth, that wherever it goes, if they didn't pass it, we wear red. If they pass it, we wear white. And so we wore white that day. Because you see, that, you see uh, that, that, uh, that my passion for social justice was channeled through that area, not politics. Why? Because politics, I didn't think I could see something really come out. But you see, with this one, you could see something happening. So you trust civil society more than politicians? Oh, yes. I trust civil society more than, because you see, they don't have any personal benefit. It doesn't benefit. They are not seeking for, for posts, so they'll come and, like in the north, when we used to go there as communications manager, they'll come, oh, give us wealth, give us that. I say, who is your MP? What did your MP promise you? But when it's time to vote, he will bring you rice, he will bring you oil, he will bring you salt. You will vote for him, and then you will look at Ashinaid for Ashinaid to what? To Ashinaid, we don't have a bank. You have no idea that it's the people who don't know your children from Adam who will say, okay, oh, these people, I pity them. Okay, I'll give five pounds a month. This mm -hmm. one will say mm -hmm. six pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, all the European countries and all the sponsors. I say, they are the ones. They sacrifice for your children. So how come you can sacrifice for yours? Now your brother is a politician. My father. Your brother. My brother. Oh, yeah. fear for Look, we are walking. We are the same family, but he has his own ideas. He, wants he to feels be president. that that's how he can best express. But now he wants to be president. Yes. Are you supporting his bid? Whatever he wants to do, I'll support him. Mm. All I do is just pray for God's will to be done. You get what I'm saying? For God's will to be done. Because... Uh, I personally will not stand there to be a politician because I, don't, I can't tolerate a lot of things that people do that you can't say. Mm. You get what I'm saying? You cannot be politically correct. No, 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 no. I cannot be politically correct. You, you are fiercely honest. Oh, well, <laughs> I try to be. I try to be, you know, because that's how our father was. And all of us, you know, we channel our passion into things that we believe is, you know, are right. So if my brother is a politician, kudos to him. I, if I always I say, boy, you are so bold. You are so courageous. I say, but you are too. I say, not to that extent. I'm not going to stand there for somebody to come and abuse me and all that. You know? Excellent. So what's happening tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow, what is happening is that this book, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that is, it has excerpts of all the speeches during the Riyakoto um, Oh, including Lost the arguments thing. of Dankwa? Yes, all of them are there. And you see, this one also sets right. In fact, almost everybody who says something about my father said the, the history right about what my father stood for. But because of political propaganda, he was misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And you see, it's now that people you know, are getting to know that he was actually misunderstood because of political gains by the opposition. Because how come all the other uh, society like Anlo, uh, this uh, Northern People's Congress and all those things, how come Nkrumah did not pick any of their leaders but my father? Because, you know, he was seen as the leader among all of them. Mm -hmm. And all of them had the same ideas that they wanted something done for Ghana, for the next generation, and not to actually... So who's launching the book tomorrow? Place. Um, it's, uh, pro the, the name is there is Professor um, Okwe. Mike Okwe. The former, yeah, the former Speaker, Speaker of Parliament. Yeah. He's the one who is launching the book, and uh, Nana SBK Asante. SKB Asante. Yeah, is the ch who chaired the event. You know, and we are expecting that, you know, this book will go far. Because, you know, we Do have... Do we know whether the president will be attending? I have no idea. My mm -hmm. brother is handling all those things. Mm -hmm. I really have no idea. But you know, from this and all the 20th anniversary celebrations, because most of, most of the celebrations will take place in Kumase, I'm just you know, believing that everything that will be depicted will correct the mistakes and the misunderstandings you know, that people have had about my father. Mm. 
because Great. 20 years is not a small thing. Great.